Hey guys, it's Joe. As you guys can see, the uh, the snow is gone, unfortunately. And yes, the birds are chirping and the sun is shining. And for most people, this makes them rather happy. Of course, for us snowmobilers, it's rather sad as we recognize that there's about nine more months before we have to go back out uh, in snowmobile. For those of you that are uh, farther north, uh, perhaps uh, in the Northern Territories or Northern Canada, you still have snow, uh, good for you. We are without snow here. It's about March 21st. I actually broke out the four wheelers yesterday and started riding those around. Uh, while we had an opportunity in a break in the season, uh, Mike and I wanted to go ahead and present some information on a few products that we had an opportunity to test this year. Uh, we had some safety gear that we had an opportunity to test. And on this slide, we had some, I guess, performance aftermarket parts that we had an opportunity to test. As we mentioned before, we are not, uh, we're not sponsored by anybody. We had to go out and buy these uh, products off the shelf and give them a try. And I think that's the purest and best way to do it. And for this particular sled, uh, what I did as an experiment versus my sled, uh, which remained almost entirely stuck, I wanted to go ahead and install two different performance upgrades that are different upgrades that are designed, in my opinion, to do uh, the exact same thing or to reach the exact same end. Those two upgrades were the MBRP uh, trail exhaust system, and that's not a full exhaust system, that was just the can or the muffler that then straps up to or springs up to, doesn't even bolt up to, but it springs up to then the uh, stock header. And then we also wanted to try the lightweight Bikeman Performance battery kit that comes with a, you know, a, a battery holder as well as a lightweight battery. So I had them installed on my sled uh, since, uh, I guess, the first ride. Uh, after the first ride, I went ahead and installed that trail cam as well as the battery and then ran this uh, throughout the year and we were able to test this against mics uh, that remained entirely stock. There are a lot of different reasons for installing uh, aftermarket parts, but for these two particular parts, you know, my goal was predominantly for weight savings uh, and then from there any additional benefits along the way. So beginning with the lightweight battery kit, I'm going to put a link here obviously to the, to the website. It's a lithium ion battery. Uh, it is a significant weight savings. Uh, here you can see when I put on the scale versus the stock system and stock mount, or so this should say the stock battery uh, and the stock mount. Uh, you can see there is a significant weight savings and we're looking at about 11.5 pounds of weight savings uh, for this very very lightweight battery uh, and bracket um, i'll show you here in a moment uh, some of the installation of that of course you pull out the battery it's not real complicated to do you disconnect the battery you pull out the battery there's a, a mounting strap that goes over the top there's a couple of 10 millimeter bolts i believe there's a, a t40 torx that has to come out uh, and then you can essentially you know wiggle the the old mount for that battery um, out of place and you do have to cut one little zip tie that's that's in there along the way and then you put in the new mount and, and i've actually had this on a couple of sleds i've had them on axis chassis before and what i still can't figure out the way that the the bracket comes from bikeman performance it's actually too big you can't then utilize the stock strap that goes over the battery and so of course i come up with a modification and i've done this on a couple of sleds and it's worked uh, time and time again where you you know buy an amazon strap uh, almost like a ratchet strap and a, a pull down strap and you wrap it around the battery a couple of times and I bend that bracket then over keeping that uh, battery in place. So I do have some experience uh, with this battery in this kit before. Uh, it has worked on my other sleds. There is uh, one drawback and you know a couple of people have noted it and mentioned it along the way which is with a lithium battery when it gets exceptionally cold it doesn't necessarily want to turn over immediately. Uh, so on the days that we saw and I had one day I walked out in the morning it was minus two degrees Fahrenheit and what happens is you go to turn the key and you turn the key at first and it actually doesn't turn the motor on and you hold the key for about four or five seconds uh, and then you let off of it you wait about 15 seconds you turn the key again and then it'll start to rotate the motor very slowly not enough to start it yet you'll hear it kind of turn it over and it's not very inspiring and it doesn't start either and you back off again, you do that for about five seconds, you back off, wait your 15, maybe 20 seconds. And the next time you turn it, it'll actually turn over almost as if it was normal or a stock battery and it starts immediately. Um, I have never had it where it was so cold where you didn't go through that process. And from what I've read, 
there's this warming of that battery that occurs whenever you start to draw the power when you turn the key it needs to warm up before it can start to actually discharge enough energy to get to the starter to go ahead and uh, and turn over the motor and as well the motor's cold the battery's cold you know everything is not working in your favor uh, is it inspiring you know does it does it have a lack of inspiration uh, i would say it gives you uh, a little bit of worry for sure however with these polaris sleds it's nice because you have the the backup pull starter that if you needed to have it started with a pull starter you can of course it's not the best thing or the most wonderful thing to do when the when the motor's cold uh, but you could do it you know that being said i never did have a single time where it didn't turn over and, and after the engine's warm and everything is going uh, as normal or even if, if it's above 15 or 20 degrees you you start the motor it turns over completely normal you wouldn't even hardly know the difference between uh, it and stock so is it uh, a weight savings yes 11.5 pounds of weight savings it is a uh, significant savings and it didn't fail me at all during this year it actually worked rather well and because i had uh, this pull starter I, I never really was worried about it so my primary reason for buying this particular kit uh, was for weight savings now on to the exhaust the mbrp exhaust as everyone knows mbrp they make some really really good uh, quality products out there i have zero complaints about the quality of the welds or the quality of the machining uh, of this trail can. I wanted, a, I wanted a can that had a different noise to it, ultimately a muffler that had a different noise from stock, uh, maybe a, a little bit more or, or a change in, in tone if you will, uh, but I didn't want that much more uh, than stock. So my, my primary reason for going to this was for weight savings and weight savings uh, only and, and I wasn't planning on having any horsepower gains or otherwise. Of course from the, the website of MBRP, uh, they work very hard and I, and I saw a different video that they'll spend numerous hours trying to at least get a horsepower or, or two out of even a muffler and with this they rated this as an additional two horsepower uh, for the muffler so clearly I didn't buy for the for the horsepower gains although that's nice to have I bought it for weight savings and then to change up ultimately the tone uh, of the exhaust and so through the season we were able to go ahead and test both of these products uh, they both made it through the entire season uh, without failure here I'll go on and, and tell you what the verdict is for both of these products after we go through a, a quick little video of how they were on the on the weight side of things. See on that. It's almost like you're barely wanting to look over your gut to see what the weight is of this stock can. You can see it was 15.6 pounds. Oh, oh, I don't want to look at it. Oh my goodness. Oh, thank goodness the scale turns off after a couple of seconds you don't have to keep looking at it 15.6 pounds stock so with regards to performance for the mbrp trail exhaust uh i would say that yes it does absolutely change the tune our tone when you are idling there's not much a difference in terms of overall decibels or output of noise of course but you can use a decibel meter that's just by see the pants and the you know the sound of your ear and you know we pulled up on a, a couple of different dnrs along the way they weren't overly concerned you know, it's not an exceptionally loud when you're on idle or at low RPMs. However, as you start to get the higher RPMs, it does get uh, quite a bit louder. Um, not to a degree that you would, you know, hear from a, from a race can or from a, from a mountain can, but it does indeed uh, get louder. Now, there were two things that I noticed about this uh, particular exhaust. One is, is that there is, for sure, without a doubt, a, uh, a bit of droning. And, um, and drone is this, um, uh, this item that happens with aftermarket exhausts where you start to get constructive interference where the sound waves start to pile up on each other uh, a little bit and then it starts to sound like a little bit of reverberation it's kind of a won 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 and this can for sure does have droning uh, and then you can hear it it's usually about at mid rpms so if you're going along at about 45 to 65 miles an hour and you're kind of mellowing on a throttle throttle and you're kind of just maintaining that speed you will get this reverb effect in this uh, droning noise if you will this constructive interference and for some people they're not very sensitive to it uh, unfortunately I'm a, I'm a person who I, I you know after a while of hearing it it does start to become a, a little bit bothersome and a little bit tiresome uh, to be candid the other thing that I will note is that it is uh, a bit louder on the top end and that's a good thing uh, for the most part uh, my buddy Mike noticed that whenever you pass somebody with one of these, these trail cans you're not trying to be rude but it's loud enough where it really kind of scares them and gets their attention uh, but what I noticed is you know obviously that I didn't I, I can't tell you from the seat of the pants whether there was additional horsepower or not you know it it feels faster because it sounds faster so then in your mind you think it's faster uh, and it might be and it might not those two horsepower 
uh, might make a difference. But the product uh, absolutely kind of did what it said it was going to do. It changes the, the tone of the exhaust. It gives it a, a throatier note, a, an MBRP signature uh, note of that exhaust. Uh, and it is a bit louder on the top end. So I guess the question is on these two products, would I buy them again? Uh, and for both of the products, neither of which had a failure this year, they both, you know, the quality of the bill was perfect. There wasn't an issue whatsoever there. Uh, for the battery, I would say this. Yes, for this two-stroke machine, I would go ahead and buy that product again. Uh, I do enjoy the weight savings, 11.5 pounds. That's, that's actually pretty significant. Um, and on that weight savings, <clears throat> it does come with a little bit of sacrifice. What I would, I don't know if it's called cranking amps or you know cranking amps when you hit this immediately on this lithium battery. But because I have a backup pull starter, I have no problem installing this battery on any one of these machines that have a backup along the way. Did it ever fail me? No. Did I lose some confidence along the way, especially when starting when it was exceptionally cold? You do get worried for that split second. Is it going to start or not? But after it starts, everything is wonderful and you're good to go. So would I put this on a two-stroke on this uh, Matrix or Axis chassis? Absolutely. Or any other two-stroke that you have a way of, for me, a way of uh, a pull starter or a backup. Would I put this on a, on a four-stroke or a machine where your only means to start it is through electric start? I don't know. I don't know if I have that much confidence in it yet. And just by the nature of the lithium battery, how it works, I I'm just not there today. Uh, so there's there's your answer. And then the other question is, you know, would I buy this out the gate and immediately put it into the sled? Well, there are some cheaper options to get it. You can just get the battery out there if you want. But perhaps you run the stock all the way until the battery gets tired and you go ahead and put this lithium in. I will say it is a wonderful replacement for a two-stroke, for one that has a backup pull start. I've been very, very pleased with it. With regards to the MB rp exhaust or muffler i should say or can for that matter and it was a trail can as i mentioned we actually wanted to get it and it be on the more quiet side there is uh you know since buying this and looking online uh there are is now a quiet can we have not tried that yet it might be something i would be willing uh, to try in the future but after riding this through the season and switching back and forth to mike sled from time to time as we've had breakdowns or as we want to try things out i will say this uh, for me, and, and this is really particular to, to Mike and I for the type of riding that we do, we're doing over 300 miles a day uh, on average. Uh, sometimes those days are 350, sometimes they, they hit 400. Uh, and with that, those long days uh, where you're in the saddle for a very long period of time, and sometimes you're mellowing along at that 65 and you're getting that droning, at least I was getting that droning, or you're on the top end of things, you're winding out the machine. For me, it actually became a little bit too much. Uh, when I switch, switch back to Mike's machine, what I found is a couple of things. Mike's had the stock muffler on it. One is you could ride longer uh, and, and not get tired as soon. Constant noise, constant loud noise uh, actually wears you out and makes you tired. Now, the other thing that I noticed is that obviously there's no drone, uh, which can be annoying. And the, and the other thing to note is that on Mike's machine, obviously with the stock muffler, you can hear everything going on with the machine with a loud exhaust or a louder exhaust. Sometimes you miss to hear certain things uh, this, this snowmobile is trying to tell you along the way that there could be, be an issue. Now, if I was only riding a hundred miles a day, if I was kind of going out and ripping as fast as I could uh, from restaurant to restaurant or from parking lot to restaurant and restaurant and then get fuel and out in the woods messing around with my buddies and out doing uh, occasional drags, I probably would get this can and maybe even get the can that's not trail friendly. But for me, with the amount of miles that we're putting on, and it was in, something I, I never thought that we would see, is that I found that it made me a little bit more tired to have louder noise in my helmet. So perhaps with that quiet can that just came out, we wouldn't have those issues. And, oh, by the way, the, you know, the objective of saving eight pounds is there. It did save eight pounds along the way. So for you, if your main objective is to save weight, change the tone, you're not doing you know, over 100 miles a day, you'd like to you know, hear that nice throaty MBRP exhaust, which does sound really, really good, don't get me wrong, uh, this would be a nice setup for you. Uh, if you're doing longer miles and, and eventually you find out that that sound is starting to wear you out, then perhaps this is not the can for you. At the end of the day, this machine here, we're at the end of the season, I've actually swapped back now to the stock can and I'm keeping that lightweight battery. All right, guys, I hope this helps. Please let me know any questions beneath. Uh, we'll be sure to uh, go and answer them and help you out. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.